Are we going to talk about Deep Dish? We could. I, I, <laughs> no, I don't want to. style pizza. Come and take a seat. A pizza, a pizza, it's time to eat. Hello, welcome to episode three of Charred and New Haven Pizza Show. You might notice that we're in a different setting today. Uh, Frank, I like that we're just kind of traveling to all these pizza places in New Haven. It's great. Yeah, you know, we're like I said, we're going to let this kind of roll and see how it goes. But, you know, today we're at Ernie's Pizzeria, Whaley Avenue, New Haven. Um, they were just on TV last week, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But that's where we are today. Ernie's Pizzeria, been around for 50 years. Place is amazing. Yeah, and if you, if you missed the first two episodes, I'm Kevin Begley from Star 9.9, Frank Zabsky, New Haven Pizza School. And uh, yeah, we just started out this podcast, and I think we got a good reaction from those first few episodes, Frank. Yeah, in general, I'm super happy. Yeah. You know, I mean, listen, everyone wants to have, you know, thousands of views and this and that to get going, but the first episode or first two episodes... I'm really happy with it. And it seems to be people are getting interested in it. Yeah. You got to build it up. You know, it's just like anything else you got to, and you know, there was a lot of great reaction from big green truck. Um, and next door, yep. people love that. Your shout out to your pizza group on Facebook, all about new Haven style pizza. Oh yeah. Those people on that group. I <laughs> love them. They're, they're so funny. They have so many funny comments and reactions. Like it's a great group you have on there. And uh, yeah. I was laughing at all the different things. And and they're also great at sharing the links and the episodes. So big yeah. thanks to, to everyone on there who did that for us, too. Yeah, no, it's been great. And, um, you know, we want to keep building it. Please let people know about us. Charred New Haven Pizza Show. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is just Charred New Haven. Yeah. Um, and we also have a Facebook page. But, you know, we just want to keep this thing rolling. And really what we want to do and, you know, we are doing this, you know, kind of because we're having fun with this, but we want to do it for you guys. So we want to have you tell us, you know, what things you're interested in us talking about. Yeah. And we got some great comments and suggestions so far. So we kind of filtered through a bunch of them. So on, on today's episode, we're going to start with pizza styles. There were some, some questions about, you know, obviously New Haven style, we all know and love, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, but some of the other styles of pizza yeah. that, that are out there that people love. Absolutely. Do you want to go over the agenda or are we going to just roll? I think we just roll. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to start with pizza styles today because a lot of people, and I see this through my social media interaction and things like that, um, they kind of generalize pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a car. You know, it's like, well, there's a foreign car, domestic car, there's front wheel drive, all wheel drive, two wheel drive, <laughs> rear wheel drive, and there's all different makes and models. Yeah. So a lot of times I see people and it drives me crazy. They say, give me a recipe for a good pizza dough. And it's kind of like, wow, it, it just, I don't know, it just bothers me for some reason. It's like, reason. what's your favorite song? Uh, what's your favorite band? You, you know, you're like, well, what, what mood am I in? What, yeah. Right. And so I wanted to explain to people today briefly about styles. Okay. Um, so obviously our show is New Haven Pizza Style, or I mean, you know, you know what our show name is, but the pizza that we love is New Haven Style Pizza. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is that there's probably 30 to 50 different pizza styles in the whole world. Wow. New Haven being one of them. And I know you guys aren't going to want to like to hear this, but this is just the <laughs> truth. Outside of Connecticut, New England, I'll even say as far as the East Coast, a lot of people don't know about New Haven style pizza. Right. You know, they might have heard of it, but they don't really know it. They've never tasted it. Although I feel like that's changing a little bit with the popularity with the internet and you know things getting shared a lot but yeah you're right the, the, m most people they're like what what are you talking about new haven style yeah kevin's 100 percent correct and that's what we're also trying to do is evangelize this whole thing but you know the hardest thing for most people to get their heads around is the char yeah right or the burt that's why we named um, the show charred yeah exactly <laughs> so you know we're going to try to change it every a little bit as as we go but uh so New Haven style pizza, obviously we know and love it, but a lot of people outside of kind of the East Coast don't really know that much about it. We're looking to change it. That being said, um, probably the two most popular pizza styles ever are New York style mm -hmm. and Neapolitan. Yes. Um, a lot of people also don't realize this, but New York is really kind of a cousin of New Haven. And what I tell people the best way to describe New York versus New Haven is New Haven starts where New York ends. So if you look at a New York style pizza, the mozzarella is very white and it's kind of got like a tan color to it and it's got a very predominant crust. Yeah. New Haven, very different. 
New Haven pie starts, New, New York starts, I'm sorry, New York bakes three to five minutes. Okay. New Haven's five to eight minutes and sometimes longer. So you can get that char, that crunch, that, yeah, because it is true. You get a New York slice, any of these New York places, it does flop a little bit more. It's got, it's a little chewier. Yes. Um, and I always think of it as giant, like the big slices, which I guess, I mean, obviously you get a small size, I'm sure. But when you go get a slice in New York, like I think the big pa double paper plates, right. like that style. Yeah. And New York style pizza is uh, what I call a lifestyle pizza. Yeah. So, you know, in New York City, which is prominently where it is, and obviously New York style is all over, but started in New York City, you know, they want a big slice. They want to be able to walk down, you know, these uh roads and things with the the white pizza plates in their hand and eating the slices yeah um but it's very different and what a lot of people also don't realize is the more you bake it the more you take the water out of the recipe mm. so that's why with the new york bake at three to five minutes you know it's not doughy but it's got definitely a little bit more moisture than if you took bit into a new haven style which has got a definite crunch to it yeah yeah um but anyways without getting too crazy about new york style that's obviously one of the most popular styles, but Neapolitan probably is the most, um, I'll call it popular style. And a lot of the newer portable ovens mm -hmm. um, are all made to make new Neapolitan pizza. Right. Which is where I feel like a lot of people sometimes get, they're like, wait, this doesn't seem like either a New York style or New Haven style when they make it. Cause, cause I got that uni a couple of years ago yeah. and it is true the way they tell you to do it. They're like, it's 90 seconds. You just turn it four times or whatever it is, but it does come out Neapolitan. So if you don't like that style, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird because I don't, you know, I never read the, the manual for any of these things, but a lot of these ovens are made to make Neapolitan. And for those that don't know, Neapolitan pizza is very, very basic, meaning um, it's 60 to 90 second bake. 850 to 900 degree Fahrenheit oven and it uses double zero flour. Mm. So what I tell people is Neapolitan is fast and hot. New Haven is low and slow. Right. New Haven bake is five to eight minutes, 550 to 650 degrees Fahrenheit bread flour. Yeah. The flour makes a huge difference. I, I've just noticed in the past couple of years of making pizza at home, like that flour thing is because you're right. Like the Neapolitan versus the New Haven, like it makes a world. The first time I ever did it with the bread flour, because yep. I was looking to get the New Haven style, it changed everything. It was great. Oh yeah, and the funny part about it is like, there's a, I'm not a flour expert, but I know enough to be dangerous. But flours are <laughs> basically rated in protein content. Yeah. So like I think all purpose is like twelve and a half percent protein. Okay. But the point being is the difference between an all purpose flour and double zero, which is actually a higher protein content than even a lot of the bread flours, is only about two percent, maybe two and a half. Hmm. But that like half percent, quarter percent is it very different when baking and making it. Yeah. Um so again, without getting too crazy with the styles, we talked about New York, we talked about Neapolitan, obviously we talked about New Haven a little bit. But there's a bunch of other styles out there. And I brought this pan to show you guys. This is a Detroit pan. This is called a Lloyd's pan. I, I loved just to get it out, out there. I love Detroit style. <laughs> yeah, it's one too. of my favorites. Yeah, like, it, it, it's a whole different experience eating it. And I'm sure making it too. Yeah, but, but it's great with that because it, it is a little similar to him with the crunch. Oh, like, yeah. Because you get it kind of charred on the top. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to uh, Christos and Wallingford. They're the only ones that I know. And there might be other places. If you, there are other places, please let me know. I'll tell people about it. But they make an incredible Detroit. Mm. Um, but the cool thing about Detroit, and a lot of people don't know this, I love telling this story quickly, is that this was started in, obviously, Detroit, where a lot of the big um, manufacturer, car manufacturers started. So I went there a few years ago. Buddies is is one of the originals, I think, who made okay. who make Detroit style. And we went and ate there. I mean, a bunch of friends and I, and it was so good. It was it was oh, mind yeah. blowing. Yeah. But these pans are called Lloyd's pans because basically what happened was one of the workers stole the pan for the parts that were going down the <laughs> assembly line, and they put dough in it, and they put this brick cheese around it, and it's freaking phenomenal. Oh, that's funny. That's a funny story. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. So obviously, we're not going to talk a lot about Detroit, but I wanted to, again, let people know about the other styles. Bar pie, colony. I like I like bar pie a lot, too. 
Yeah, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I, I like the crunch a little bit. If it's undercooked, I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm like, all right, this is. But if they if they do it well done, you get that again a little bit of the char on the side. Yeah. Plus, I grew up in Massachusetts where there's a lot of bar pie up there. Yeah. Especially like a lot a lot of the places on the north shore of you know north of Boston and even a lot on the south shore where I grew up, it's a lot of that bar that bar style. Yeah, you know, I think because I grew up with New Haven so much that you know it's not like I hate bar pie yeah right you know i'll go to colony two three times a year if i'm going to meet friends down there and my kids love it so we go but it's just not it's not what i grew up with right and the other thing i don't understand is that like they have very few toppings so True. like you order a meatball and it's got literally like five meatballs <laughs> yeah. and i just i don't know i guess i have yeah, a problem it's, it's personal preference i uh, you know i i have young kids it's funny you say that so we love going to colony because it's loud and yeah. it's easy it comes out fast it's uh, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, it, but yeah, the, you do need it to be a little bit well done. I, I usually order it that way, like a little well done to get that crunch. Yeah, and it's kind of so. There's a difference between thin crust and cracker. And so for me, the yeah. bar is a little bit more of a cracker pizza. Yeah, cracker style. Um, but again, it's great if you like it. It's just not my go. Are we gonna talk about deep dish? We could. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to. Uh, my one thought on deep dish is it, I, and and this is com coming from someone who used to work at a pizzeria Uno. Oh, I, serve, wow. I served tables and my I, I was a server there. In my you 20s. actually admit that? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, and I've never had. I, have I had it in Chicago? I think once I had it in Chicago. But it's just like a casserole to me. Like it doesn't feel like it. Sure, you go to the most famous places in Chicago. It's probably delicious and fantastic. It is. But you can only eat like one slice. You never told me you right that you up. worked at Uno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. That's where I waited tables. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Made some extra cash. It was yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the pizza skins, too. That was a great app. It, it, they, they would take we would take the, the deep dish dough as an appetizer and make basically potato skins on it Ooh. with the mashed potato and bacon and cheese. That was a party. Wow. Uh, but regular deep dish, it's just, I don't know, pizza to me, like it goes back to what you grew up with is the thin slices, you know, just whether it's New York style or Haven style or bar pie or whatever. Yep. It's not the giant, like if I want a calzone, I'm going to get a calzone. <laughs> right. Like a, a, or it almost seems like a dessert. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. My understanding, and I've never made um, deep dish, but that the actual dough is really more of a pie crust. So yes. it's not dough like you would make, like we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, so, yeah, you know. I've had deep dish before and I've actually had it in Chicago. I don't remember the place I went to, but it was right near Wrigley Field. So maybe that's a thousand different places. But yeah. Um, so I used to enjoy Uno every once in a while because they used to be in Milford. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, and that might have been before your time. But, um, you know, they closed down now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. And <laughs> most people hate it. They call it a casserole. And, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it just kind of makes for good conversation too. Totally. But it's rich and it's thick it's and it's, it's too much. You know, you can't have a bunch of slices of that. Um, is there any other styles you want to get to or should we talk about New Haven style? Yeah. So the only I'm, we're not going to extrapolate anymore on any other styles. I just want to make a list of. So we talked about New Haven, Detroit, Neapolitan, Chicago, Bar, Thin Crust, Thick Crust, American, Grandma, um, Bakery. There's a St. Louis style. You know where we're going with this without listing them all is there's a ton of different styles. Yes. That was my point that I actually probably talked more than I should about. <laughs> <laughs> but what, so when people do ask, because you were saying earlier, like, you know, not everyone in the country or the world knows New Haven style yet. Yep. Uh, if someone says, well, what is New Haven style? What is your stock answer? Like how, when someone asks you that, what makes it New Haven style? Yeah, so what makes it New Haven style um, is, in my personal opinion, the simplicity of it. Mm. You know, it's basically bread flour, room temperature tap water, instant dry yeast or baker's yeast, if you want to use that, um, and um, salt. Now, New York is a little bit different because they add oil, but I keep going back to New York. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so it's a basic recipe. And obviously, there's all different processes of how to, when you get all that together, do you pre-mix it? Do you not? Do you leave it out after you've mixed it? Um but outside of that, basic dough recipe, a fresh milled Italian or California tomato. Mm. That's what I prefer. And that sauce is simple too. It's just the tomatoes and salt, right? And oregano. And oregano. 
Yeah. Yeah. Three ingredients. You can add whatever you want to it, but the general New Haven sauce is some either already pre-milled tomato, like a 7-Eleven mm -hmm. or a tomato magic. Um, or again, what I like, I like the Cento and I mill them myself. Yep. Um, and those Cento's you can buy in, you know, your grocery store. So it's the, it's the simple fresh tomatoes, um, thin crust, no particular edge, rim, cornotion, which I can never pronounce that word. It's a French <laughs> right. word that's um, kind of crazy. But uh, the thing that I that I love about it is it's got a caramelized mozzarella. Mm. So I like a thin layer of mozzarella and the sauce just bleeds through. Yeah. And you get that red caramelized kind of color. Um, you know, that's New Haven style pizza. And uh, I like the pecorino too. Oh, yeah. I, I like adding that to it. That gives it that, that kind of salty flavor to it with the cheese. Um, now, is there a way if you're making New Haven style, is there a way to get the sauce to bleed through like that? Because I, I, I've noticed that as a little bit of a challenge. I know you said to get the mozzarella sliced thin usually. You hit the nail on the head. You got to get it as thin as possible, right? Yeah. So I usually tell people number one cut if you're going to the deli, if you get okay. a deli sliced or a thin layer of shredded. Mm. And I don't recommend store bought shredded because it's got an anticoagulant on there. Yeah. So the trick is if you go to your deli counter, you can buy a, a, a pound or two from the block because mozzarella is sold in a block. And it looks like shred it yourself. Bingo. Huh. That's interesting. I've never done the shredded. I know that you had said the slices. So I always go and say, cut it as thin as, a, as you can. Yeah. And then I just use that to spread them out on top. Yeah. And then obviously the other thing is the signature char. Um, which can easily be gotten through a pizza steel mm -hmm. and a stone. You probably could do it, but it just takes a little bit more time. Yeah. I, I recently made pizza uh, last weekend it, with the, the steel. So I have the outdoor oven, but since it's still cold, I, I yeah. use the steel in the oven sure. in, in, in the kitchen. And it actually, it worked great. The preheating is what you need to do though. I've noticed I mean, preheated at like 500 for an hour. And then that really gets it hot. Yeah, I recommend 550 for an hour or as high as your oven goes up. Yeah. But the preheat is absolutely key. Um, and, and quite honestly, you know, you're going to get pretty close to a restaurant quality pizza in your home oven. Yeah. Um, and people always, now I say always, but often say, well, Frank, you know, you're out promoting all these pizzerias and don't you want people to go out to buy, you know, to pizzerias versus making pizza? And we were talking about this before we came on air. <laughs> yeah. It's a ton of work. To make pizza at home. It's crazy. So I, I made three pizzas and, and let the kids play with the dough for a couple of them. So I had like maybe five or six doughs. Yep. And it was like not all day, but it took a while. And then, yeah, it does take a lot out of you. So I can't even imagine yeah. opening a new place or owning a pizza place. Like it's, it's a lot of work. You're right. It's a commitment. Yeah. So, you know, I think people like making pizza at home because they know that they can and mm -hmm. it's kind of a novelty and it's probably more of like a holiday. Maybe the kids come over and stuff like that. Yeah. But day in, day out, like you wouldn't make, you know, pizza for the night for, for dinner, meaning like a regular Monday through Thursday because <laughs> right. you'd be there all day. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It, it would be insane. I also, I also like it in the warm weather as an alternative to a cookout. Oh yeah. It's fun to have people over and you make some pizzas and, a lot of people usually are used to going places having burgers and dogs, but then you fire up that pizza oven and it's this whole new experience for them. And they're like, oh, this is neat. You're making pizza. Like yeah. it, it adds a little bit to that too. And one thing we could talk about maybe when summer starts rolling around or maybe 4th of July is I've actually got a really good video and experience literally making pizza on the grill. Mm. So basically the same grill you would use to make the hot dogs and hamburgers, yeah. you make it, um, the oil both sides without getting all the details. It's really cool yeah. and it's super thin and crunchy and it's something that's fun that you can do instead of making hot dogs and hamburgers. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Uh, chicken so, too. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get into, um, we want to talk about a little bit of pizza news. Yep. Uh, because there's been some, so we launched on national pizza day and we, since then, since our episodes have come out, there's been some news that happened on national pizza day. And then since then, um, so the first thing is you've probably seen if you're if you're listening and watching this podcast and you're into pizza and you live in Connecticut, you, you, you've <laughs> probably seen the free pizza for a year promotion. Yeah, that's all over Instagram. Yeah. Now, I printed out uh, I got a paper right here. If you're watching on YouTube, I printed out what what you get if you win this thing. OK, so if you win free pizza for a year, you get three twenty five dollar gift cards to Frank Pepe's, Sally's, Modern and Bar. 
So th- that's the big four they picked. So you get three to each, which, which equals $300 or 12 pizzas. Mm-hmm. So the value is $300, 12 pizzas, depending on size and toppings, for a year. Frank, I just want to ask you. <laughs> Don't ask me. Is 12 <laughs> pizzas enough for a year of pizza? If you won this, if you won free pizza for a year, does 12 pizzas last you from th- now till next, call it March? Yeah, so if if you're a pizza gavone like myself who eats <laughs> a lot of pizza, uh, that's not going to last you too long. If you're on Weight Watchers, you're good. Um, but no, in all seriousness, you know, yeah, I think it was a great promotion. I love the spirit of the whole thing. Yeah. But, you know, the reality of it is, is that it's a little, it's a little on the short side. I don't think I'm getting past April or June if I, if I have 12 pizzas. <laughs> right. Especially like with a family, like, yeah, in the, and a lot of these places, and this is no knock on these places, but their, their pizzas for good reason tend to be a little on the higher end price wise. Yeah. So you get a, you know, a large, maybe it's 35 bucks, maybe depending on your toppings and your size and all that. You get the twenty five dollar gift card. Like that, that's another reason why it's like I'm I, I'm not going to last ha- half the year, three months. Never mind a year. You got to go in the pocket for sure. At the end of the day, though, free pizza is free pizza. Yeah. So I guess that's that's a good thing. I just think if you're going to call it free pizza for a year, it needs to be like fifty two gift cards. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to put a little meat on the bones. Yeah, yeah. You know, so but as they say, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and the the other big thing that happened right here where we're sitting, right is that on National Pizza Day, again, the day we launched this podcast, they declared New Haven the pizza capital of the U.S., right? The governor. That's correct. Which was kind of neat. Uh, you know, as a, as a pizza show th- that we are, like to, and I feel like a lot of people already felt that way who live here. Sure. Because they're like, well, it, it's almost like redundant. It's like, well, yeah, obviously we have the best pizza. Like, what, <laughs> what are you talking course. about? Like, of course. But I guess it goes to what we were saying earlier in the show today that, People in other parts of the country or the world don't really, really understand. And now maybe that that's official. People will be like, oh, it's almost like a tourism thing. Yeah. Like, oh, now it's officially the, you know, the, the pizza capital of the world or the, the or the country, I guess I should say. Uh, so let's go there and visit it. It's, it becomes like a thing for people who are traveling maybe on the Northeast or want to come here and see it. Absolutely. You know, it's certainly not a bad thing. Um, and I think, you know, innately it builds, you know, um, it builds conversation because People are, you know, I'm sure from New York and New Jersey and all those other places. Oh, you know, they're not the pizza capital of the country or whatever it was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, listen, anything like that is good for Connecticut, good for pizza, good for New Haven style. So hats off. To them. And I think that kind of adds to it, like what you were just saying, like it adds to the debate, which is also what I love about pizza. Like people debate toppings and styles. And now they have this to debate too. Like, no, New York's the capital. No, New Haven. No, what Chicago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, and speaking of that a little bit too, the state the state food thing, did, did that happen yet? I know that's been going on for years where they're trying to make, I thought this was going to be incorporated into that announcement. I actually thought because they were teasing it a little bit and I thought the announcement was going to be that the governor was going to say pizza is officially the state food. And then it turned out being the, the cap, you, you know what he did, the, the cap, pizza capital of the country. So do you know anything about is it? Is it going to happen? Has so, it happened? I know they've been trying to get it passed for the last two or three years and they have not been able to do that. Um, so, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm neutral on that subject. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of like, like the proclamation I think was really cool because it was, you know, it was more of an honor. Right. Um, but the state food thing, you know, again, we talked about this. We don't really, we don't at all talk about politics on this show and, you talked and jokingly, and I love it. You said um, pizza is your party. Yeah, which I, have, I think I, is great. I have a T-shirt that says, <laughs> yeah, that's that says awesome. "Yeah, select your party," and it's pizza party. Yeah, uh, but, but you know, we did see a lot of comments. You know, when people talking about the state food on Facebook, uh, saying that like, aren't there more important things to worry about? Like, why are we so? And I guess my thought on that is, so you do have to go through all the official government. I guess like avenues to make it the official state food. But why can't you just make a like? Why can't you just say, "Yeah, it's the state food." <laughs> like like he did with the proclamation. Yeah. Well, I think the proclamation was kind of to support maybe that bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I'm kind of in the camp that, you know, listen, for people that know me, follow me, you know, I love pizza. I love New Haven pizza. I love Connecticut. I love everything about it. I just have somewhat of an issue on the political end. Yeah. Um, that's kind of 
Well, I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think it should be the state food. I don't know if we already have a state food. I don't even know if we do. I think we do. The lobster roll, maybe? <laughs> well, it's either the lobster roll or like lose, lose ham, you know. Lose, oh, the burger. Yeah. Yep. yep the hamburger. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We should have the pizza. Um, <laughs> But pizza, yeah, pizza. So, so this is a great, uh, this is a great episode one, and no, this is episode three. Our timer's tree, going up. It's tree. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you everyone for watching, listening, subscribing. You know, we've had so much support since since the first episode. Yeah, and uh, with episode two, and now with episode three. So make sure to watch on YouTube, share with your friends, Chard New Haven, subscribe, yep. like uh, everything in Instagram, X, TikTok, Facebook. We're on all of it, and it's all simple. It's uniform. It's Chard New Haven. Yeah, definitely. And one thing I want to tell people, people that have been following me for a long time, um, I used to do a lot of reviews under the brand Pizza Gavones. Mm. Really, a lot of my content now is going to be here. So I'm going to put some episodes of this show on my Pizza Gavones YouTube channel. Sweet. But please subscribe to Chard New Haven. That's going to be where you're going to find me. And if you like this content that we're talking about, and it's only going to get better, we're going to have people starting to be able to call in and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But as Ed always says, and you guys can't see Ed, but Ed's the guy who makes all this happen. Yes. He's the sound and video guy. <laughs> does a great job. He holds me back. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, please like, please subscribe, smash the like button. You know, post this on social media as much as you can if you really like what we're doing. Um, and I had some people ask about the podcasting. So it's on all, basically all the podcast pl platforms. You get okay. Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music. Uh, you can find it basically everywhere. So again, you can see all that on our social media and YouTube and all that. Yeah, and you've got that good link tree, which I've been trying yep, to get out there. That's got everything that's there. That's got all the links on there um, too, yeah. And a little tease coming up in episode four in a couple of weeks. We are going to talk to the man himself where we're sitting at Ernie's Pizzeria, right? Yes, sir. The guy who makes the best meatball pie in the world. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching to episode three. And remember, it's not burnt. It's charred, baby.